Furious Driving, proud to be supported by Diamond Bright, protecting, cleaning and caring for the Furious fleet and for yours with 10% off using code FD10. Follow the links in the description below. Hello and welcome to Furious Driving and today we're going back to the interwar years. Curiously an era that was never referred to as such at the time. Anyway, this is the Ford AA or AA, the commercial version of the Ford Model A which ran also from 1928 onwards. The AA ran for just four years from October 1928 to October 1932 and it bears more than a passing resemblance to the standard car because it does actually share an awful lot of the car in the commercial vehicle. But underneath it is significantly upgraded because this is a one and a half ton truck with the capability to do an awful lot of very heavy duty things making it one of the most popular vehicles for commercial users in the 1930s and even up until the 1950s in some parts of the world let's take a look around so the superstructure of the truck everything above the chassis and as far back as that here is relatively similar to the car however the big difference is lying the chassis itself which is broadly similar in design to model a's car chassis but the truck chassis for the one and a half tonner is significantly heavier duty because they can do some quite intense stuff with this thing suspension wise they've gone again very heavy duty at the front we've got a single leaf spring running from left to right mounted here in the center and down onto this beam axle in the middle incidentally you can see here the enormous drum brakes which are rod operated so no massively sharp stopping to be done anytime soon thankfully this is all working properly and it's been overhauled and repaired quite recently <laughs> moving to the back of the truck and under the truck at the back you can see this sturdy beefy girder of a chassis rail back here but also we've got an individual leaf spring for each wheel notably this particular truck has got twin wheels so it's a dually setup <laughs> and significantly no shock absorbers on this so bouncy now if there's one thing I don't like about using pre-war cars it's the bonnets because you have to un unspring hook the latches and then roll it over itself and that just gives me the heebie-jeebies that something is gonna break or scratch I just don't like doing that but here we have the same 201 cubic inch or 3.3 litre four cylinder that we find over in the car version of the Model A it's got an updraft carburetor it makes 40 horsepower and it's got mechanically driven everything so mechanical water pump mechanical fan mechanical six volt generator over on the other side just there the big difference between this and the car version is the four row radiator so it's got more cooling so it can run hotter for longer but this is a very very simple sturdy engine that will basically go on forever and as you can see they're not 100% oil tight but that's good for rust proofing the chassis <laughs> now there's a lot of anti-EV sentiment and worrying and tearing out of hair about the fact that car batteries can explode and bring down airport car parks but look at this thing this physically part of the car's scuttle is your petrol tank right over your knees and sitting in your lap that is a taddy bit scary fortunately this car because this tank was starting to get a bit rusty on the inside a solution has been found which i'll show you in the back which makes it an awful lot safer to be in as i'm sure you can't fail to notice this thing is the modern mobile crane 24 hour recovery phone modern 22. i wonder if that number is still in service but this thing has got a crane in it now looking at the shape of this rear of the truck this isn't the standard rear that you'd get with the factory crane variant this looks like an aftermarket one where someone's bought a truck chassis a chassis cab and fitted their own stuff this came from hf salvage equipment harvey frost and co limited of london so i'm guessing that was done probably in 1930 or so climbing up this is a device of fairly limited function however it is incredibly sturdy you've only got two controls on it which i'll quickly show you first of all you've got an up and a down on this big wheel here which will raise and lower the jib secondly you've got a, a big gear wheel attached to a small gear wheel and a pair of handles so you can raise and lower the chain itself so you can drop the thing down hook a car up and I don't know if you've got some kind of expensive Porsche or something with lots of uh, delicate electronics in the bumper but I'm not sure I'd fancy having that attached to the front of my car <laughs> now as I say this truck does have the benefit of additional safety first of all we have got a fire extinguisher just in case anything does go wrong secondly in this locker just here which is a uh, original issue equipment to when the truck was working all those years ago we have got a modern fuel tank fitted in here so this is now far safer so if the thing got rear or front ended it wouldn't be sitting on a bomb in your lap you're at least 
being contained away from any potential fire behind a fairly substantial metal wall. And just look at the thickness of the glass and everything. This is just a solid old beast of a vehicle. Although, because like many of these things, it does in fact have a canvas or a fabric roof with wooden slats in the middle supporting it. Right, let's go and have a look around inside the truck. Now, the cab is obviously different to the car because it's a truck. Um, inside though, the trucks did get a far more spartan interior than the cars. I mean, dark cars weren't the height of luxury in 1930, but they were a little more fancy than what we have here. On the door, we have literally nothing. Uh, I don't know if this has been lost over time, but it does look like there is literally nothing. We've got a window winder though, we've got a proper wind up window, and this is your door release, which I think looks like it's missing something on top just there. Um, the seats though are quite a comfortable little bench seat, although it is quite cosy between you and the passenger, and it doesn't really go back very far. People were smaller back then. And looking up above us, as I said uh, on the outside, it is wooden slats holding up a fabric ceiling. Now underfoot we have got a wooden floor, which has recently been uh, replaced as it was getting a little bit tired. We've got a big running board to step on, because it's quite a long way up into the truck. And we have got, well, let's feast our eyes on our many, many amenities. We have got the luxury of an electric wiper. It looks like this moulding or pressing was originally for the manual wipers, which in 1929 would have been the thing to have. This truck does actually have a GPS speedo fitted because that makes life an awful lot easier. But as a rule of thumb, you're generally doing less than 30. <laughs> Just need to know that. It does have an openable front windscreen. There's your air conditioning sorted out. We've got a nice little pressing, sort of slightly art deco-y shape into the metal panel of the dashboard itself. So that's... That's quite nice. And in the center of it, we've got, I think this is the same diamond shaped pattern as we had in the car. That's our speedometer just there, which I suspect doesn't work. Our amp meter to keep an eye on the battery level and our starter, our ignition key, the starter itself is a button on the floor. This truck does have a, a couple of extra added switches here. I'm not quite sure what this one does. And this is our water temperature. And also we've had um, proper little electric indicators, turn signals, fitted to the, the truck as well, which makes life an awful lot easier because no one knows what hand signals mean anymore. The steering wheel, I don't think I can even get far enough to get it all in, it's massive, right in your chest as well. On the left-hand side, this isn't your one-touch wipers or automatic headlights, this is your mixture. So you can adjust the mixture in, on the fly. This is your hand throttle, so you can set that to almost a very rudimentary cruise control if you want to put it, look at it that way, or a very rudimentary slow idle speed. There is a choke down here as well, so when the car, well the truck is, is cold, you need to give that a little pull just to get it going. And this up here is the lights, side lights and headlights and all the rest of it. And in the centre, wow, that's a very high trouser waist banded pop. Inside of it, we've got a lot of headroom but not much in the way of in front of us room. So getting comfortable and actually even getting your foot into the truck is a little bit of a mission. Once you're in though, I was gonna say it's really comfortable, but honestly, <laughs> it's not. Your knees are kind of round, your knees are right up when you've got your feet on the pedals. And this is the significant thing, which is gonna be entertaining when we got on the road. This is a center throttle truck. So that's the accelerator, that's your clutch, and that is your brake. So, I think we've waffled on enough, but let's get this thing out on the road and try not to crash. Right, okay, there's no, no seat belts. I mean, safety is definitely safety ninth on this truck. So ignition on, ready to blub the throttle a little bit. And it's alive, it's alive! Right, okay, so the big difference between the four speed in this truck and the three speed in the car is that the first gear is very much a crawler gear. So you only use it very briefly, if at all. But second gear is a bit tricksy on this thing. So we will start off in first gear. Oops. It's designed for the very heavy loads. Bring brakes on the right. Clutch down and we stop. Okay, back into first again. And off we go. Yeah. 
stay back from 25 miles an hour. <laughs> Not the best brakes. Although we're fairly certain this truck was built in 1929, we don't really know very much else about its history. Not even whether it was built in Manchester in the UK or across the water in America. And we also don't know at what point it was converted into a tow truck. But it has been owned and maintained by a car club since 1979 and we know in 1979 it was stripped down to a bare chassis. At that time from photos we know it was painted yellow, presumably for its tow truck duties. But since then it's been maintained by volunteers from the club. Parking and turning, I'm sorry, I'm going to park and turn. Now we've got reverse gear here by lifting that and pushing that into there. GoPros around. Stick in fourth for this because I need a feet for a 